welcome to the next instalment of Warhammer 40,000, 1850 points we're playing. And it's Eldar versus Imperial Guard. And we're playing on this chaos wasteland here. You can see the terrain, a volcano, dead trees and rocks and scattering terrain and scrub. So it's, the scenario is the scouring, so there's six objectives. Um, we haven't determined how, mu how much each one is worth yet. And then the deployment zone is Vanguard Strike. So there's a, you can see the middle line run up the middle there. Then Imperial Guard will be deploying in this quarter of the table. Running around here. And then James has already set up his Aegis defense line. Really handy upgrade to have for your Imperial Guard army. And then coming around here, in this corner will be the Eldar setting up around this volcano. Here, objectives. Eldar have placed one there, one here, and one here, looking out across the table. And then coming around for the Imperial Guard, James has deployed one just there, one right here behind the Aegis defense line, and then one further forwards just by this old tree there. So, six objectives. Right, welcome to 1850 points game. It's a classic showdown today, Eldar versus Imperial Guard. A uh, slight adaption to my Eldar list as we evolve with the new codex. So the Warlord remains the same, it's the Eldar Avatar. It's definitely including him in my force. And then for troops, I've knocked down the troop choice. Again, it's down just to two units of jet bikes. Very, very cheap. Uh, no upgrades, I know one of them there has got the Shuriken Cannon, but that's not counted in the game. Uh, just two basic units there. And then again, flanking Scorpions. Uh, with the Scorpions Claw upgrade on the Exarch. And then uh, the Wave Serpent with Twin Link Scatter Laser and Shuriken Cannon underneath. And at the back here, Prince Uriel is out. He's not in uh, my force. That's the first time I've dropped him. So I saved me 140 points. Uh, the fire dragons are still in there and they're in their transport, so I'll still be using those. Uh, two heavy supports, two wraith lords with bright lances and ghost glaive swords and then with uh, flamers as well. And then coming around is the warp spiders. They're still in and they count as a scoring unit in this scenario. And then here I've taken the Harlequins again, uh, unit of nine, and with the Shadow Seer upgrade and Troop Master. Now, I dropped the Fire Spears or the Shining Spears in the game. That saved me 160 points, so that's a total of 300 points. And I've spent almost every night this week painting him up. I finally got him. Eldar Wraith Knight. Right, so here's the Wraith Knight. Now, I've gone for the sun cannon and scatter shield upgrade and then underneath the arm there you can see he's got the scatter laser as well just to help give him that uh, twin link when he rolls for blast. It's fully articulated so the hips swivel around, the head moves and then the arms I can move those around as well and I'm obviously able to swap those over for the different armaments there and then the weapon underneath. And then the uh, weapons and the arms move around uh, you can see they move around backwards and forwards, head, and then I'm able to twist the weapon as well. And I can swap the armaments over for uh, I decide to go for something else. So there's the Wraith Knight, we'll see how he gets on. So Wraith Knight, real nice addition to the army, really sets the old army off, just adds such a dimension to the game. Uh, that's a, two of the best moves I think that Games Workshop have done. They've added these big creatures to the game and also the introducing flyers, really, really good move. And so that's the force you can see. Uh, we've sacrificed a leader and a unit, and we've gained ourselves a Wraith Knight. Now, a lot of you have been asking and saying, well, can we see how you use units in the game? I, what I'll do is we will follow the Wraith Knight around this game. We'll see how he performs against the Imperial Guard. Right, James's Imperial Guard, a list that is always changing. 
and he's decided to make some adaptions from the last game that we played against the Tyranids. So James is going to run through his list and tell you what he's got. Okay, this is my 1850 force. Um, my troops choice is a platoon of infantry of three squads, uh, led by Commander Chenkov. And uh, he's got an auto cannon and a Vox in his uh, platoon squad. First squad is uh, I've got a um, Commissar and I've got a Heavy Bolter and a Vox and I have a second squad which is uh, sorry which has an Auto Cannon and a Flamer and a Vox and uh, a third squad in the platoon with a Flamer, Vox and an Auto Cannon again and I have a unit of Conscripts, 50 in total and they have uh, send in the next wave special rule which is led obviously by Commander Chenkov and I have two more uh, squads, heavy weapon squads of uh, missile launchers and las cannons ouch <laughs> ouch yeah well, we'll see. and I have my fast attack choice which counts as scoring in this mission is a hellhound on with a dozer blade and smoke launchers and I have three Lehman Russ battle tanks, all armed with whole mounted las cannons and Sponson's heavy bolters. And for my HQ choices, I have a Lord Commissar with a power weapon, or power sword. And uh, I have a command squad, and uh, bearing in mind he hasn't got a bolt pistol, I haven't paid the points for him. But uh, I have a heavy flamer and two metal guns, and a dedicated transport, which is the Chimera. Good. Yeah, we said to James in the last game, why didn't he put heavy weapons with his squad? So he's taken the advice, his basic infantry squads now have got heavy weapons bases, and he's gone overkill on heavy weapons bases here. Two nasty squads, missile launchers and las cannons. It's as if he knew that he'd be playing Eldar in this it's game. <laughs> but uh, it's an impressive looking army, and we're going to move on now to deployment. Right, James has deployed, and it's a nasty deployment. He's pretty much set up his Aegis defence line, and his entire force is in here. He's worried about flankers coming on behind and deep strikers, so he's blocked out the whole army there. You've got three Lehman Russes uh, pointing straight ahead, looking up the table. Uh, the two Chimeras at the back here, and then heavy weapons squad, missile squads there, and then infantry running all the way along the Aegis defence line. And then his last cannon team is sitting there as well. Uh, that is a nasty setup. He's got so much heavy firepower pointing out across the battlefield. Deadly. And to add to that, he's rolled a three here. So this objective is now worth three. This one's worth two. And then over here, this one's worth a four. So he's holding the majority of the points. The Elder have got to try and take this position, or at least assault it and take out those units. Tough, tough task. Masses of firepower pointing out down across the table. All right, Eldar deployment. In reaction to all that firepower, there's no way I can stand there and walk slowly towards his battle line and survive all of that. There's just no way. So in reaction to what James has done, uh, I've got a lot of units just defensively set up here and then I'm going to try and bring on as many reserves as possible. So the two Wraith Lords just out here on the flank, we're looking to get cover saves with those, that will keep them alive a bit longer. And you can see the angle that I've got them at here. They have cover behind the rocks over there. So James's tanks haven't got a view to them unless I move around or he changes position. And then coming around here, I've deployed a unit of jet bikes, the Warlord, the Avatar, and the Warp Spiders, and they're just sitting over this objective here. And again, if you look at the angle, if you come around, you should see it, the, his shots are blocked against there as well. So just defensively with the Elder, and then in reserve to come on to try and attack his position will be the Harlequins, the Wraith Knights. If I set this guy up, He's just going to fire everything he's got at me and take it out. And then the fire dragons and then the striking scorpions, they'll be flanking. And then one more unit of jet bikes. So quite a lot of stuff still to come on for the Elder. 
We'll see if we can crack open that Imperial Guard nut. We've rolled for objectives. James holds the majority points here. He's got three behind his barricade here, which is an excellent result for him. This one's worth two. This one's worth four. So major objective there if James advances out to take that. And his idea would probably be to blow the Eldar away and then move up and claim those objectives. Straightforward game for James. And then the Eldar, this one's worth two. Not too bad. That one's only worth one. And then the one over here is worth three. So we're going to move on now. See if the Eldar can steal the initiative. So we'll just roll up. A six, they do. So we're moving on now to Eldar, turn one. Eldar turn one, very straightforward. There's been no movement here. We're just happy sitting there uh, behind cover with no view. James may come out from behind his barricades, we'll see. And then the Wraith Lords have moved and then I've done their run moves as well. They just come up behind this cover. Still hopefully covered behind here. So if he wants to engage me, he's gonna have to start moving his forces or he'll just be happy to sit right where he is because currently he will win the game if he manages to hold these objectives. The Elder have got to break into this Imperial Guard. So we'll see how they do, and we'll see how much help the Wraith Knight is in this particular scenario. So we're going to move on now to Imperial Guard Turn 1. Right, moving for the Imperial Guard. Uh, he's pretty much holding his position. Now these tanks aren't destroyed, he's just popping smoke all over the place, just trying to give himself some cover saves, anticipating Eldar reserves coming on. And then other than that, not really any shooting, you can't see any targets, and he's just going to move. Now his tank over six inches. That's Imperial Guard movement done and shooting, it's all been quiet. Plan is with these, bit of tactica here, the Wraith Lords. There's no point in getting them killed. It'd be pointless. So all we're doing is we're just hiding and there's, there's a purpose there is that they're holding this flank. So if he brings out any units on from here, like the conscripts for example, then he'll have two Wraith Lords to deal with. And then I might be able to peel around this, come around this corner here with a view to shoot the vehicles later on in the game. But I don't want to be able to take I don't want to take on all of his stuff at once, maybe just take on one vehicle at a time but it's an important turn coming out now being Eldar turn two we're going to see what comes on from reserve for the Eldar and what comes on may change the shape of the game so Eldar turn two coming up right Eldar reserve rolls important so we're going to see if these Harlequins are on I'm not exactly sure what to do with these but I'm going to have to think of something because I've rolled a six they're on now the Wraith no would want everything to come on together. So we rolled a five, yes, he's on. The flanking scorpions, they are on. The fire dragons aren't on on a two, and then these jet bikes don't really want them on a three. Well, they are on, so most stuff's arrived. That's pretty good going, because um, I want an attack that's simultaneous with my reserves. Right, Eldar turn two. Uh, just to mention, Imperial Guard versus Eldar between me and James goes back years and years and years. So it's a long-term hatred between these two armies <laughs> so he will be in a, a very very bad mood if we beat him today with the Eldar so uh, reserves I brought on that jet bike unit here and again it's just behind there so that he can't see me uh, Wraith Lords are just staying where they are I'm just gonna keep them alive there's no use to me if they're dead and coming on here now there's a couple of sly moves by the Eldar Harlequin's coming on here, just looking out to move behind the rocks, just to keep in cover. And then if I just come up over here, Scorpions have arrived on the flank. So this one's got out looking to do side armour on that rust there, perhaps. And then the Scorpions have deployed, so that has created an immediate problem for James's force. you will need to deal with those. And then the Wraith Knight has come on here. Jump monstrous creature, 12 inches. And then with a view looking down, and he's so high, he can see over and down inside the Imperial compound as he fires into the infantry with his sun cannon. So it's going to be an interesting shooting phase for the Eldar coming up 
on turn two. So we've had night fighting, that's now gone. So it's Eldar shooting on turn two. Right, what we've said is uh, he's not right behind this Aegis defense line, so he's not going to get that cover. But because we're going to fight this heavy weapon squad here, because this one is behind, technically behind an infantry unit, he's going to get his four plus cover save through there from the blast weapons. So with the Wraith Knight, the first one we're going to fire is the scatter laser. So that gets four shots, just need a hit, which I do. And we might as well just roll our wounds now. So there's two wounds for James to deal with. He'll sort that out in a minute. But that now gives me twin linked when I fire this sun cannon. So first one coming in is a hit. And I've got one, two, three heavy weapons bases there. So we're at strength six on this one. Yes. And then strength six on the other two. Yes. I'm just going to stack up these dice here. And then the next one coming in is it's BS4. So that's reduced to zero. So that's hit dead on target as well. So one more wound on the top squad. We've rolled a three. So that's another one. And then one, two more on there. Yes, two fours. So he's got those. And then the third one, last one coming in, is a hit. So it's uh, one for the top base yes and then two more yes so that's total fire from the sun can it strength 6 ap2 so it's instant death he's got his cover saves to do uh, so he has two scatter laser saves of four plus and then he has six saves on these guys of ap2 and then three saves for this squad and that squad is behind the Aegis defense line so he'll get his if he decides to go to ground or get a higher uh, save there, so what are you going to do? Go to ground with them. Go to ground with them. Okay, so we'll go to ground for the guard. So this squad, if they go to ground, they get a two plus, two plus cover save, so not them ones. Continue. Two plus cover save will be these hits from the sun cannon. Two plus, yes, he's passed there. Two twos and a six. These guys are going to get a six plus, uh, but they, they're shooting through Infantry, that's four plus. Go to ground, three plus. So two scatter laser saves of three plus. Yes. And then six saves of three plus. He'll be really annoyed if he passes all these. One he's fouled one. So that's the closest. Off from the blast. Yeah. So he's lost one last cannon. God, it's that Aegis defense line has saved his bacon. If he was in the open, there'd be a wipeout. So. Mm, good firepower from the sun cannon, but he's well protected. Right, Eldar shooting in on turn two. Uh, these guys have activated the Veil of Tears and have run up just behind the ruins here, which is good. Uh, we've covered the firepower from this guy. Uh, it's impressive, but it was impressive saving throws from James, so his stuff's still alive. Uh, that front infantry unit's gone to ground and so have these guys. There's a lot of going to ground behind the Aegis defence line as the firepower comes in. Now an impressive display from these guys. Uh, the Scorpions lobbed a plasma grenade up and over the wall and uh, took out one of his missile bases and then fired the pistols and made James go to ground there as well. And then we decided to keep the shield up and fire with the twin link scatter laser and the Shrugan Cannon, which became twin-linked after the hits with a scatter laser. And James went to ground, counting the Aegis defence line, but rolled... It was five saves and he got two twos, so that wiped out the last of the missile unit there. And that's a good turn-up, because that's a dangerous unit for taking out my uh, Wraith Knight. So that's good shooting from the Eldar, pretty good. And we'll move on now. How will James deal with this Eldar threat? If he can wipe these guys out, then he can sit comfortably on his objectives. We're going to move on now to Imperial Guard, turn two. The tactica here that discovered by making multiple units go to ground, James is going to have to use his orders to get those guys back up, and that prevents him from issuing orders that are going to enhance his firepower against things like the Wraith Knight and the Wraith Lords. So that's a handy tip that I've found, make the Imperial Guard go to ground and he'll have, he'll have to use up his orders to try and make them get back up again uh, in his shooting phase. That's a handy 
tip that I've found, but we'll see now how James is going to react as he moves his forces to counter this Eldar assault. Right, Imperial Guard movement, it's uh, as you predicted, he's reacted to the Wraith Knight and the Scorpions coming on. He's going to try and take those guys out. It'll be a miracle if we survive, I think. We're going to face the full fury of his firepower. So the rushes have spun around, heavy weapons have spun around. Uh, and then the Hellhounds moved up to come on from reserve looking to flame the Scorpions and then the Conscripts have turned up early in the game this time so they are here looking up to move on to this four point objective as well so we'll see how well this guard firepower deals with the Wraith Knight. I'm out in the open but I do have that 5 plus in Vun save with the Scatter Shield so Imperial Guard shooting phase coming up now, on turn two. Right, Imperial Guard shooting on turn two. Uh, he had got a flamer here at the back of this uh, guard squad. And he fired it through his own guys. Killed the front guardsman and wounded the base there. And managed to kill a couple of scorpions. And then firepower from the other guard. And then coming down from the some of the chimeras. And the hellhound has reduced that squad down to two and I'm just going to roll their morale actually on a nine yes an eight so they're still in the Exarch and one scorpion left and then firepower against the Wraith Knight Chimera this Russ that Russ these last cannons and this Russ all firing up and receiving two wounds on the Wraith Knight so I'm not going to last too long if I keep taking that kind of firepower but that's guard uh, shooting done and he's done his run move with the conscripts they've moved up an extra three inches so we're going to move on now to Eldar turn three we'll see if we can continue the assault and reduce down in casualties but at least I haven't lost the Wraith Knight so he's still here and we'll see how he performs in Eldar turn three Right, Eldar turn free movement. These guys have just stayed here. It's tempting to go out of them, but I've got to try and play for the, to win the game itself. So I'm just sitting back with these guys, uh, holding the objectives for now. And then coming along, uh, the fire dragons have turned up in their transport there. Uh, the Harlequins have moved up and over through this terrain. And then the Wraith Knight has gone another 12 inches. So he's closing down the distance. And he's got a good commanding view over the Imperial Guard position. And then the Wave Serpent Transport has just moved along six inches, faced around. And the two remaining striking scorpions, we'll see if we can get them in combat if they're not killed on Overwatch. And then coming around the table, coming along here, uh, now with James's attention diverted in this direction. I should have done it last turn, really, but the Wraith Lords have come out. This one with a view down uh, to fire at the Lehman Russ up the table, and then this one to move around as well, make a slow and steady advance towards the Imperial Guard position. So Eldar shooting phase coming up. So we're going to fire the Wraith Knight. Priority is to get rid of those heavy weapons. Oh, we can't really damage the tanks. So we're going to fire down into the compound again and try and take out those las cannons that are left. Uh, we were saying that James hasn't got any cover because I'm so high up. I can see past the Aegis defence on his infantry. And now I've got a clear view to those. If I was if I was this side firing in, then he'd get his cover. But because I'm firing up and over from this direction, then there's no cover safe for him there. So we're going to roll for scatter laser. We've got three hits and we'll just roll up those wounds. Yeah, so he's got three scatter laser wounds to do. First blast coming in has gone off the table. Second blast, looking for hits now. That's a hit. So he's instant death already with those three scatter laser hits. Um, but we're clipping that base at the back there. We've got a wound on it. And then the last one coming in is another hit. Another wound. So he's got two instant death wounds on uh, this unit here. So What's he going to do with this unit? Okay. It's going to go to ground, so he gets two plus cover save. Twos, yeah, he's past those. But that's that Laz Cannon team removed as well, so not bad going. We'll do the rest of the Eldar shooting phase now. 
Right, Eldar shooting on turn three. I guess the debut for the Wraith Knight, a very difficult game for him. Uh, heavy firepower he's been receiving, but we've done his shooting. He's fired down, wiped out that, uh, that heavy weapons team there, so they're gone. Uh, but impressive shooting from the rest of the Eldar army. These guys have moved up in support, which is good. And then the Wave Serpent, which I think is one of the best units for the Eldar army. He's deactivated the shield, fired those shots through, fired the scat laser first, got those hits, fired the cannon, and then deactivated the serpent shield, fired ahead, and has destroyed this chimera. It was two glancing hits, uh, one from the scat laser, one from the shooting cannon, and then the serpent shield uh, got a penetrating hit, and rolled a six, blew up the whole thing, and has killed a couple of the guardsmen inside as well. So excellent result from that wave serpent. And then we've discovered in the rules that it, that shot, Serpent Shield, ignores cover. Ignores cover. So I could have brought those Wave Serpents on, fired at his heavy weapons teams behind the barricade, and taken them out. So that is something to bear in mind for the Eldar. Uh, the Striking Scorpions chucked a grenade, plasma grenade, and fired a couple of shots. James has gone to ground and made his sa saves there. And then coming round, the Fire Dragon Wave Serpent's just moved up right up to here, so there's another threat come on the table uh, for the Eldar. So we're on top of James here, uh, we'll see how it goes for him, and then here the Wraith Lords, this one's uh, ran two inches, and this one had a shot down before the Wave Serpent came along and caused a glancing hit on this Lehman Ross. Right, Eldar Assault Phase, the uh, Scorpion's charged, on Overwatch he killed the last regular scorpion, so it's just the Exarch that made it in. Uh, he charged in, and uh, Mandy Blaster hit, but James saved that. And then three kills with the scorpion's claw. Deadly. James fought back. Uh, he got about five hits. Only one save to make him pass. So we won the combat. James's LD was reduced to five, which he rolled a five, so that melee continues. But good job with the scorpions. They were ploughed into a unit and a safe in combat on James's turn. Free. So, Imperial Guard turn free coming up. We'll see how they do. So, a bit more tactical for the Eldar. Um, I mean, these forces here have been stationary through the game, but they're sitting there, set up, ready to claim all three objectives on turn five. So, you've got the Warp Spider sitting there, two units of jet bikes, and then I can use the Avatar to get that fearless 12 inch range as well to help these guys hold their ground if some heavy firepower comes in. So it's kind of boring, but for the game, purposes of winning the game, then it works quite well. And you'll notice that by assaulting him heavily in the game, it is holding the guard back and they're therefore not threatening the objectives on my side of the table. So we'll see if the Eldar can survive and continue the assault and keep the Imperial Guard pushed back because he's holding on to uh, good scoring points there with those objectives so the assault is important Right, Imperial Guard turn 3 uh, James has done his movement here Lehman Russ has moved up and around to get a clear shot at the Wraith Knight here uh, these guys are locked in combat this Chimera has moved forwards looking to engage the Wave Serpent, these squads are holding their ground, one squad's falling back, uh, the two Russes are sitting there, and the Hellhounds moved up, looking to get a flame template on the Harlequins there, and then the Conscripts have moved up, and they're going up, and they're going through this uh, alleyway here, so James is faced with multiple problems to deal with, he's got this Wave Serpent, he's got these Harlequins, he's got the Wraith Knight, and he's got this wave serpent with the fire dragons inside. So multiple headaches for the guard here. And whilst all that's going on, uh, he is just ignoring the wraith lords as they slowly move up. So Imperial Guard shooting now, coming up on turn three. Right, we're just in the middle of Imperial Guard shooting here, and uh, this Liam Rush has laid a pile of ones. It's rolled a pile of ones, so he's done no damage on two wounds, and he has two Russes left to fire. So James, you're going to fire the Russes. May the Emperor bless and protect you. 
<laughs> Fire the first one then, we'll see if the Wraith, Wraith Knight can survive. Just at the... yeah, go on. Oh, he's gone wild. So roll one dice for wounding, please. No, he's rolled a one again. <laughs> so, right, so fire your next shot. Last cannon. One heavy bottle. One heavy bottle. He's three shots, got two hits, and then he wants sixes to wound. Nothing. And then the last cannon. Four plus. A two. <laughs> He's fouled with that one. And then the last lame Russ. This is getting dire now. You have to bring the Wraith Knight down. If he's free to roam in James's deployment zone, then it's game over. He's firing heavy bolts. He's got two hits. He's got no wounds. We're going to fire the Laz Cannon now. Do the Laz Cannon, James. Six is a hit. Three is a wound. Oh, six is a wound. And then you want a five plus with my shield. No, so we've taken a wound. Fair and square. So on three wounds. Half dead now with a Wraith Knight. And then the last blast marker. Coming in. He's hit. He needs a four to wound. He's going to roll a five. And we want a five up. Four again. So that's another wound. Good shooting at the last from the Russ. We're fearless. We carry on. We're on four wounds. We're two thirds dead with the Wraith Knight, but we're still alive. So Imperial Guard shooting is finished. Now the Russes have fired the Wraith Knight and dealt out two more wounds. Uh, we've lost one Harlequin from the Hellhound and then other shooting really is the Wave Serpent's been destroyed. That was destroyed by two Melter Guns fired from the back of this Chimera. Uh, I forgot they were inside so he's taken out the Chimera. Our shield was down obviously because we fired it so it was Armour 12 and he went through and then blew it up. So no one inside but the transport's gone which is a shame. But that's Imperial Guard shooting and we're just going to move on to finish off the assault just over there and the conscripts have run up a couple of extra inches as well so they're sitting on that four point objective the game at the moment sits on four points there three points here so that's seven and the elder i've got a two point objective at the back and first blood so it's seven three to the imperial guard at the moment Assaults here for the uh, striker Scorpion Exarch. He's already killed one guardsman here with his Mandy Blasters. Rolled a six to wound, and James failed to save. And then now he gets a base of two attacks and then plus one for combat weapons. So he's on freeze. We've rolled a triple two. So he's killed one and he's got to survive now. James striking back. He's going to get two, three, four, five, six, and seven. So seven back. Let's see what James rolls. Seven dice. He needs fours to hit. Yes, he's done well. He's got four hits. And then he needs fours to wound. I'm just going to roll that one again. Two saves. Two saves of three plus. Let's get some dice. Come on, two fours. Oh, no. <laughs> so we win that combat by one, so he's LD of seven. Nine, he's bust. We'll chase him on initiative. Oh, I've rolled a six. So the Exarch has wiped out the squad. So a hero is born for the Eldar. The striking like Scorpion Exarch has wiped out a guard squad. Uh, what a way to end Imperial Guard Turn 3. As we move on now to Eldar Turn 4, the Eldar sense victory. This might just be a mopping up action for the Eldar army. I don't think so. We'll stand firm as the objective six. Alright, Eldar movement on turn four. Remember the game won't end yet, it'll be next turn. So we're, just, we're sitting here with the uh, jet bikes, Warlord, and the warp spiders. And then coming around here, you can see the uh, fire dragons have disembarked. Got a rear end shot against the Liam Russ there. This one's moved over to get side armor on the Hellhound. And then the Harlequins have moved forwards. And the Wraith Knights jumped over the barricade now 
12 inches and is right inside the Imperial compound. I don't know if he's going to survive much longer, we'll see. Our aim is to try and charge this uh, Chimera here, try and destroy that. And then the Exarch, suicide mission, last one left. We'll charge one of those units down there, see if he can make it in. And then coming around now, the Ray Flords have moved along six inches each, this one to here and this one to here. They're quite far away. But they're getting closer. So we'll move on now to Eldar shooting. We'll see how well we do. Right, Rafe Knight firing down. I'm going to fire at this Chimera. So the first thing I've got to fire, this side armor is the scatter laser. We'll just roll those. So you've got uh, three hits, strength six. Now we'll deal with those armor rolls in a minute, but that just gives me twin linked. Then with this blast here, I'm going to position it just on the end. Uh, so that the hole's still on the vehicle, and then the blast clips this base here. Now I'm going to re-roll that, and it is a hit. So we want a two to wound that, which we get. So there's one on there. We've got one strength six on this vehicle, and the next one I'm just going to roll in here. Uh, is a f scatters four. That's my ballistic skill, so that's a hit. So I roll to wound that base. Yes, another wound on there, and then the last one coming in. A nine will re-roll that scat twin linked. Uh, that's gone two inches over onto the vehicle, so that will count still as an armor hit. So we've got three scatter laser hits, side armor. We've got a six, which is a penetration, and then three blast hits, which I have failed to do. So we've got one armor penetration roll. We rolled a two. So that's uh, Silence the Vehicle, and he's got one hull point. It's not enough to destroy it, which is a shame. And then James has two armor saves to make on his heavy weapon squad. He can either go to ground or he can... He's going to ground. Yep, and he's passed those. Rolled a three and a four, so that's passed. So not bad, um, but we get the chance to assault the Chimera as well in combat angry now um, <laughs> because the striking scorpion exarch has thrown a grenade and he's hit it's landed amongst there he's got seven uh, well he hasn't got any saves because it's AP5 or AP4 plasma AP4 the plasma grenade so he's going to try and go to ground and get six up saves uh, the commissars in there right Eldar 2 shooting on turn four uh, so we fired the Wraith Knight there, he failed to destroy the Chimera and didn't do any wounds on the back here. Uh, the Scorpion Exarch threw a plasma grenade and killed a load of guardsmen down there, but they've held their ground with the Commissar in the unit. And uh, the Harlequins fired through, James went to ground behind the barricades, two plus he's alright, but he's gone to ground. And then the Fire Dragons fired at the rear end of that Lean Russ and destroyed it. And then we deactivated the Serpent Shield and fired the Wave Serpent and that has destroyed the Hellhound. Some multiple casualties on the guard there. And then <coughs> the Wraith Lords have moved up six inches of this one, three inches of that one. And they're closing the net in. The net tightens on this guard force. So we're going to move on now to Eldar Assaults on turn four. Right, so Eldar Assaults, uh, we're just going to do the Wraith Knight here. He's made it into combat, so we'll see how well he does against this Chimera. Now the Chimera moved, uh, we get four attacks then plus one for charging, so we want freeze. With a triple six is pretty good, and a one's a miss. So we've got those, with strength ten, so it's auto penetrations. So sixes would be good. It's cocked. A four. So we've got the six, so we've blown up the transport. Five it's men. gone. Five men inside. Six men inside. We have wounded four of them. So James will make four saves, please. He's made one save, so it's three casualties. And then we'll roll to see how far this camera blows up. Two inches, so we'll calculate if there's any other casualties there as well. So that's good combat there from the Wraith Knight as he's charged in. Right now, uh, Eldar Assaults on turn four. 
Would you believe it? The Exarch lives. He killed a guard when he won the combat and then survived all of James's hits. So that melee continues. James passed morale. And then uh, the Wraith Knight destroyed that Chimera. Killed a few of James's figures inside. So that is it. That's the end of Eldar turn four. Eldar are all over this position. And it'll be Imperial Guard turn four now coming up. I mean, it looks bad, yes. But if James eliminates uh, this Wraith Knight, which he could do, He's got two wounds left, and if he can deal with them, and deal with these, then he'll just rearrange himself, and sit on those objectives, and he could win the game. So, game is not over, it looks bad, but the guard could recover even at this stage. So we'll see what James does, and see how his army performs on turn four. Just noticed something about the game here. And that is the fact that the whole table's empty, and really it's 1850 points. Battle is taking place on a two foot square part of the table. It's all going on in this zone here. You look how crushed this game is. And that's really James's fault in a way. That was his deployment with the guard tool. They're all piled up in the corner. And it has resulted in an empty battlefield. He's brought he's no reserves coming on, so it's just two Wraith Lords patrolling the area. And then all the carnage and fighting going on in this zone here. It's an interesting game, tight game, and frustrating really for the guards. Not much room to breathe. The Eldar are all over at the moment. But if he fights them off and sits on the objectives, he can still win the game. So the game still hangs in the balance at the moment. Right, Imperial Guard movement on turn four. Uh, the rushes have backed off a bit here and made a gap and then Chenkov, uh, now joined by the Lord Commissar unit, has just fallen back to here. Uh, that melee continues and this unit has moved up out and just looking over the barricades now looking to fire at or perhaps assault the Harlequins. I'd imagine they're just going to fire all they've got. Conscript unit has moved up and through here, flooding through this gap and around the edge of uh, the ruins here and I think they're going to try and take out the uh, fire dragons. It'd be a miracle actually if we survive all that last gunfire. So Imperial Guard aren't out of the game yet. We'll see how they do as we move on to Imperial Guard shooting on turn four. Right, Imperial Guard shooting on turn four. What did I say to you? I said if he shoots well, then he can turn the game around. The conscripts have fired through. Uh, a whole load of saves to make with the uh, fire dragons. They passed a lot of them, so two of them still live. The wave serpent's still alive. And then over here, this squad fired. Uh, first rank fire, second rank fire, and the flamer as well. And wiped out the harlequins. They're gone. And then here, a lucky hit from the auto cannon, wounding and I'm failing my save. And the guy there with the melter from the command squad's been promoted. He brought down the last wound on the Wraith Knight. The Wraith Knight is gone. And because of that, James was able to then swing his turrets around and fired a shot and wounded this Wraith Lord here. So now look at the situation. Not many Eldar left on the table at this end. So again, James can rearrange his force, put troops on the objectives and win the game. So we've got this combat here to go. We'll see how the Exarch does against this squad. Right, melee is on Imperial Guard turn four. The Exarch, Scorpion Exarch killed two more. They have weapons base win and the last guardsman. And then James uh, did two wounds on me, but I saved them at three plus. Excellent job and he fouled morale so the commissar executed the sergeant and then he passed morale so it's one on one now in that combat that's good news for the exarch done a good job so the game shifted now the guard have not lost yet this game is going to go right down to the wilds it all hangs really on those two ray floors if they can close in if i can eliminate these two tanks somehow then we should be alright to advance the Wraith Lords in. So we'll see what we can do now on moving on to Eldar, turn 5. The game could end on this turn. Right, Eldar movement on turn 5. The game could end this turn. Uh, the Avatars moved out 
with the warp spiders they warp jumped nine inches not very far uh, this jetbike squad's moved up and this one's just moved in just to hold that objective we've got a potential here of six objective points not enough to win us the game let's presume that we'll survive over there and then coming around the wave serpent picked up the fire dragons and then has moved off and just over the top of this objective it can't deny the objective it's just there to block uh, the imperial guard unit as it moves in and then that melee continues with the uh, scorpion exarch and then the wraith lords have moved up six inches and they're closing in right james is angry again now on eldar shooting on turn five it's gone like a dream uh, the avatar's moved up and he's just getting that 12 inch fearless on the jet bikes there and these guys have done their jetpack move so they have moved on to the objective there. It's only worth a point, but it helps. These guys are turbo boosted up and are now holding that three point objective. The Ray Floors, this one ran, extra five inches closing the gap. It's good going. And this one we decided to shoot, and it was worth it. We penetrated Fowder's cover save, so it's the whole point, and, and immobilized now. So he can't swing his last cannon round to bear. That's cut his mobility down. And then the shooting from the Wave Serpent. Amazing shooting, firing through, killing all the guardsmen except the sergeant. Great, great shooting on there. So the game has officially swung in favor of the Eldar now. Uh, we'll move on to see if the Commissar survives against the Exarch Eldar combat coming up on turn five. got a Mandy Blast to hit and it's a toughness free yeah yeah so it's a wound so he's past that and then the scorpion's claw three attacks three three hits <laughs> you don't believe how angry James is twos to wound they've all wounded so he's got five refractor saves to make he's rolling them on my orange Eldar dice and he doesn't want to <laughs> <laughs> He's going to roll them on his grey, grey dice. See if stand like. firm, whatever. <laughs> Watch this. No, he's gone. So the Commissar is dead. Superb fighting from that Scorpion Exarch. Brilliant guy. So we'll just consolidate him. And then now we're going to move on to Imperial Guard turn 5. The game could end at the end of James's turn. Imperial Guard movement on turn five. Again, this could be the last turn of the game. The conscripts have fallen back. They're shrinking back away from the ray floor. Still sitting on that four-point objective. Key objective, that one. And then coming around, uh, he, he's moved the conscripts a little bit over, so he's got a chance of later on running over onto this one if he changes his mind. And then the Lehman Rushes, this one's swung around. Well, it's had to stay there and it's mobilized. He's going to fire at the Wave Serpent. And then this one's staying where it is, firing directly ahead at the Ray Flood, just through the gap up there. And this game, really, a game where heroes have been born. The Lord Commissar has left the command unit and is running across the table to take on, personally, the Striking Scorpion x so It's going to be a showdown between those two. And then the command squad has run forwards out of the uh, ruined or wrecked Chimera. And he's going to take out this wave serpent here with his melt. And he's already brought down, firing from the back of the Chimera, the other wave serpent. He's destroyed that. And then he has also destroyed or taken out the last wound on the Wraith Knight. And now he's going for a third kill. This guy here, we'll see how well he does. Right, he's just fired his last cannon and failed to penetrate the wave serpent and then he was aiming there with the blast, he rolled a five and uh, rolled five inches and it scattered straight on top of his hero. We'll find out if it hits me actually, we'll have to check that out, but it's definitely hit his friend. So, rolled a wound. Oh, <laughs> rolled a wound. One. Oh, he's wounded and then rolled to save. Four up. Four plus save. Do it. A two. He's gone. Take him off. <laughs> I 
Right, shooting for the Imperial Guard. Uh, fire from both of these Russes has immobilised a stunned and caused two hull points on the Wave Serpents. That's knocked it about really bad. And then the Conscripts, 46 shots at the Scorpion Exarch. He wounded him 10 times, made 7 saves. Um, but died sadly, so the Exarch's gone. So Hero is born and has died. That's it, there's no assaults for the Imperial Guard, so James is just going to roll to see if the game continues. One or two, it'll be over. It doesn't, it continues. We're going to move on now to Eldar turn six. Eldar moving on to turn six. Forces really just staying where they are, they're just set to hold those objectives. And then coming around the table, the Wave Serpent has to sit where it is. Uh, the guys have got out to there, and then we'll see if we can run them and shoot perhaps at this Liam Russ. And then the Wraith Lords have moved up, closing the gap, and I could reach him. The monstrous creature could reach those conscripts in combat. We'll see how we do. So Eldar shooting phase coming up now on turn six. Right, Eldar shooting on turn six. Uh, the wave serpent fired forwards and has slain James's warlord. That's another victory point there, so he's gone. Uh, these guys ran forwards five inches and only caused one glance on the Russ, which is a shame. And then the wraith lord fired down and got another glancing hit on the lame rust there and this one's run up five inches still not enough to contest that objective still too far away so the game's still not over yet james's turn now on turn six not much left but he could still get a result here so we're going to go on to imperial guard turn six right imperial guard turn six movement conscripts really have stayed where they are just trying to hold the objective they can't back away from it because uh, they need to stick on those four points. Uh, his Russ has moved around, he's just ignoring the fire dragons looking ahead to fight the Wraith Lords because those are causing line break at the moment, so he needs to destroy them. Company commanders move behind just to shoot the guys in the back. Uh, these have stayed where they are. This Russ is immobilized, so it's still going to continue firing there as well. So, and one other thing is here, this guy here, the Lone Sergeant. He's moving up to sit on the objective. My vehicle will not count as a denial unit, so he will be able to take that objective and claim those points as well. So it's not over yet. Imperial Guard shooting coming up now on turn six. Right, Imperial Guard shooting on turn six. He's done pretty well. Conscripts, or a few of the conscripts fired down 15 shots and he killed the Scorpion, uh, the Fire Dragon Exarch. He's gone. Past Morale, though, so that unit stays. And then firing across with the Liam Rosses caused two wounds on the Wraith Lord. So not too bad game. And he's got assault, so I think he wants to charge the commander into the uh, fire dragons. Or fire dragon, the last one left. So we will see now how well he does. And we'll see also if the game continues. So Imperial Guard assault phase and melee is coming up. So another hero is born. He has killed the last dragon and has moved up. The last figure on the defence line. <laughs> There's no one else left. Right, so James is going to roll now to see if the game continues. It will continue on a 4, 5 or a 6. A 2, game over. So we're going to see who has won. I think the old I may have snatched it. We'll calculate the points up now. All right, once again, one of the tightest games of Warhammer 40,000 I've ever played. I'll show you why. Eldar, objective points. There's two points there, one point there, and three points there. That's six. Then we got first blood, first unit killed. Remember, it was the missile team down here, so that's seven. Then the Lord Commissar was killed here, so that was Slay the Warlord, one point. And then the two Wraith Lords have scored a line breaker point. So a total for the Eldar of nine. That's what we thought the score was. And then for the guard, it was four points holding this objective. 
Three points for holding this objective, these guys count as troops. And then the lone sergeant there managed to move around and claim this one, because vehicles don't count as denial units. So that was nine all. And then we realise that you get an extra point for killing fast attack. And there it is, the burning hellhound counts as a victory point. So that is a total of ten, nine to the Elder. The Elder have snatched it by one point at the end. One point was the only difference between both the armies. So very, very tight game. Great fun game, very frustrating game for the Imperial Guard who were tied up straight away. They held on well, fought back, but just at the end, not quite enough to claim a draw or a victory.